my friends, Paul here in the Rojovi Music Workshop and welcome to part two of the double neck guitar upgrade. Uh, okay, so in the first video I introduced uh, the new project and explained what I'm going to be doing to the double neck. Uh, I've taken out the old um, uh, pickups and I'm installing humbuckers. So... Um, I've been doing a little bit of preparation off camera um, just to save time and you know video footage because it wasn't particularly interesting to watch or it wouldn't have been particularly interesting to watch and uh, quite time consuming. So let me just set up the camera uh, so that you can see what I'm doing and I'll explain what I've done so far. Okay, so... Just uh, check that for position. I think we're good. Okay, so um, I've put masking tape uh, on the top and on the side uh, where I'm going to be cutting the holes for for uh, the the humbuckers and for the control panel. And um, I decided against putting the humbuckers right up against the the front of the bridge. Um, you know, the strings vibrate less right up next to the bridge than they do further up. So um, I've been, I checked uh, a few of my other guitars that I've got in stock um, for distance of the, the humbucker from the bridge. Uh, basically the bridge humbucker from the top of the bridge. And what seems to be standard, um, so it's what I'm going with, is um, the the front edge of the bridge in any case is 1.5 centimeters from the this edge of the humbucker surround 1.5 centimeters from the front of the bridge to the outside of the humbucker surround so that's the distance I've gone with um, you know it's tried and tested we all know it works so it just makes sense to, to uh, to do it that way so I'm I'm definitely only having one humbucker each side and it's going to be kind of central between the the bridge and the sound hole um, but more towards the the bridge so it's, it's just toward the bridge off off center um, so I drew I drew a line across uh, e each of these 1.5 centimeters uh, from the front of the bridge and I found the center line and drew drew a center line up here as well and then use that to line everything up and um, first of all draw around the inside of the surround the, the humbucker surround for each one then I put each humbucker on top so that I could draw around the lugs as well for the adjusters so that's exactly what I need to cut out for each humbucker, including the, you know, the adjustment lugs as well. So that's all marked up, both sides ready to cut out, and I've done the same on the side for the control panel. Um, so again, I put the control panel in place, uh, drew around it, drew, you know, through the holes as well, and again found the center line, lined it all up. Now. I had to basically do do this and this at the well, not at the same time, but I, I did this first, and then I lined up this um, because what you've got to bear in mind with the humbucker in there and the controls right here inside, I didn't want you know any one of them interfering with the other. So the controls will be you know the, the pots will be all along here, and then one of the humbuckers is going to be across here. So I had to be careful that they weren't going to interfere with each other. And uh, I'm not sure how well you'll see that, but if you if you check the, the middle of the humbucker there, that comes between two of the controls there. So that works out just fine. Now, uh, as for actually drilling all this out or, or cutting all this out, I have several options open to me. Because I'm a serial tool buyer, I've got you know many different types of tools that I can use for this job. So, I could use my router. 
Um, I could use uh, this hole cutter, hole borer set, which is basically a saw set in a circle with a with a drill bit in the middle. Um, I could use that. Uh, I could use my step drills. Uh, I've got a set of three there. Uh, that's the biggest one. Um, so there's that option. Uh, I could use these um, spade end drill bits. Uh, I've also got um, basically hole borers, but they wouldn't really be any good for this job. But so you see, I've got quite a few options available to me. Now, as I said, they, these are not going to be much good for the job, so I can rule those out. Um, I think these um, sometimes are a good option, but I've found with this this wood, I've done some test cuts that these tend to tear out the wood a bit, so they're out of the out of the uh, running as well. Um, and the same with these step drills. Um, they're usually pretty good, but sometimes you can get a bit of tear out with these. So, even though it's the most aggressive option, uh, this is the one I'm going with. A um, little bit apprehensive about this, but um, it, it should be fine. Because, I, you know, I've used this before. I mean, I used the big one of this set to cut out the, the, the sound holes, and it was absolutely fine. There was no tear out. Um, inside um, that seemed to work just fine so this is what I'm going to go with um, for the control panel at least it's not it's going to be too big for well that one's going to be too big for that let me just grab the small one see if that will work yeah, very tight going to be quite quite close to the mark there um, maybe not maybe not that one I don't know yet um, but this this will be good for uh, cutting out the, um, the control panel, um, that should be absolutely fine. So, uh, again, I have options. I can use my cordless drill, uh, I can use my power drill, or I can use my uh, pillar drill. Um, but, uh, it's, you know, I would have to put this in sideways like this in the pillar drill. And it's too big, so that's not going to work for this. So, for control purposes, I'm going to use my cordless. Now, as I said, I'm a little bit appreh apprehensive about this, but I think it should be fine. I don't think I've got anything to worry about, really. It's just that, you know, this is the most crucial stage of this job. Um, because if I get this wrong and make a mess, that's it, it's over. <laughs> You know, I'll completely ruin the whole thing. So um, I've got to be extra careful at this stage. Uh, make sure I don't make any mistakes. Take take my time, and you know, <coughs> be careful about it. Okay. So uh, I think I'm going to need to. Uh, let me see. Put the camera back a bit. Not too much. Uh, let me just set up in a way that you're going to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay. That should be alright. Okay, how's that? Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Okay. So, quite a crucial part coming up now. Um, I'm going to... I think yeah, the drill bit in that is a bit blunt, so I'm going to drill um, a pilot hole first uh, with one of my wood bits because I don't want that wandering and causing a mess. Uh, let's see what I should do. I just need a small pilot hole. that too. Okay, so I'll drill a series of pilot holes first. I'll put that on number two.
just check for any tear out. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so um, I'll put this gizmo back in the drill. Okay, back onto speed one because I want to I want to keep some control with this and make sure that I'm holding that nice and firm. Okay, here we go. Woo! Close to the edge. <laughs> very close to the screw hole mark. I might have to actually move it down a fraction when I put it in, but there you go. First mistake. Uh, okay. I'm going to attempt to put it on speed two, see how we go. is about to die, that's good. There we go. Battery, battery, battery. Hopefully this one's charged, it should be. There's a time. Okay. We're good. I must remember to charge, there's two batteries I need to charge now, I must remember. Seems to have. Uh, hmm, strange. Looks like it looked looked like it had torn the wood out, but it hasn't. Okay, that's the first one. scary doing this but it seems to be going all right there she goes okay two more of those tear up Right, so I've got two holes drilled. I'm going to drill here and here as well. Um, but uh, yeah, the, te the tear out's not bad at all, really. A little bit, but I can tidy that up. Uh, no problem. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm not going to 